He didn't say, oh man, the devil, he's some big bad dude. He said, no, get me behind me, Satan. Get out of my way. And he told him to go, and he had to go. Every single time, he had to leave. But, um, it said, I look at the definitions of it. But what is fear, and who is the author of fear? First, we have to know who brings fear. Who brings fear? It's not God. I mean, God's the opposite of fear. I mean, his belief is faith and everything. Jesus is the safest and all that. But the author of fear is Satan. And he brings fear. He wants to, in John 10.10, 10, says all my scriptures are going to be in the NLT tonight because they're easier for me to read. But the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Everybody knows the scripture. But I am, to, I am come, this is Jesus, this is Jesus, he said, I come, am come, that I might have, that you might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus brings life. I mean, that's, that's the best thing. And thank God for Jesus without him, we'd be in trouble. We would be worried about everything going on in the world without Jesus, but I know this is the end of the story. I know the end of the book. But i got a few definitions right here. Webster's Dictionary states, and I'll look the definitions up, fear is... An unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. If you're aware of something, that means you're focused on it. If you're focused on everything in this world going on, I don't even watch the news. And that's, if you do, that's on you. It's probably not right to anybody if you watch the news, to be honest with you. Because I wrote by this thing, this past, on the way to work, I was riding on the road, I had my trailer behind me. This, the next time I know this guy, all these cops were like, flying by me. I'm like, what's going on? And I, I passed this place in my life. And I'm like, man, something's on them down there, and there's cops everywhere, and this business in Lada. And it turns out this guy shot at this cop, and all this kind of state trooper, and I believe they got him. Hopefully they did, because he shoot him law. He would have get got him. He should have messed with the law, because <laughs> they were there for a reason. And he, and he was doing drugs or something, probably something crazy, like all this other people are. Well, without God, you're usually doing crazy stuff, you should, because that's what the devil wants to do, destroy your life. But it's an instance of this emotion. It's instant. When you get in fear, it's immediately. If you start fearing, you're like, oh man, what am I going to do? This, that. A state marked by this emotion. It's marked by it. And you can tell when you're in fear. You don't have to ask anybody if you're in fear. Anxious or concerned. I mean, I mean, you can be worried about something, worried about how am I going to make it, how am I going to pay these bills, how my family going to do this, I believe in God for this, but it's, this is happening, all this stuff. And the devil, that's what he does. It says, what if, what if? <coughs> But profound reverence, and this is, I mean, this is a different definition of it, but profound reverence and all, especially toward God. There's a different fear, that's a good fear, being reverence, reverential towards God. But for a reason, another definition right here is a reason for alarm, danger. If you're in fear, you fear danger, you're scared to death, usually you're scared, just to be honest with you. And most people I talk to and witness to, they're always scared all the time about this is happening, all this is happening. I mean, I know some things happening to me. Yeah, somebody, I got stuff to protect myself in the house, but I'm not really to, I pray every day. I mean, Jesus said, he will take care of us if you trust him, and he does. I do trust him, I do my part. I pray and ask him every day for protection when I leave my house. I ride by my house and say, thank God I'm safe and protected on the way to work. Where I come, we brought back home safe. My wife is protected and safe. And I, like I told you last time, I'll, what I believe as far as that goes, about stuff being paid for, children and all that good stuff. But I speak it. If you don't speak it, you speak stuff into existence. Everything that's been spoken into existence, Jesus did it. The God, he spoke the world into existence. His church right here was spoken into existence. I mean, it's, it acted that way. You, what you say is what you'll have. But if you take if you take your eyes off Jesus, you're in fear. You are in danger, and a lot of times, scared to even live. I, I know these guys, they're, I, they're talking about even taking their life and that kind of stuff, because they're scared. I mean, they're just slap scared to death. And even though we don't look at it a lot of times, all over the world, People are looking for an answer, and God's the only answer. Drugs, alcohol, yeah, sex, man. all this kind of stuff. That ain't never going to fill your happiness. There's a guy I've been witnessing to about alcohol. I mean, he keeps on listening to these people, and I mean, they're not, of, I'm not saying they're not of God. <laughs> I mean, I've heard them before, and I've heard them one time, I think that's good enough. I ain't going to call their name. But anyways, if you want to listen to that kind of stuff, you're going to constantly stay defeated all the time. But, I mean, God's word is life. But... <clears throat> Peter got into fear. We'll, we'll read the scripture in just a second. When he was walking on the water. If you got Matthew 14, verses 23 through 31, it will be an NLT. After seeing them walk, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Jesus went by himself to pray up in the hills. That's a nice place to be in the mountains. But night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, far away from land. For a strong wind had risen. 
they were frightening and they were fighting heavyweights. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Because when they couldn't see it up close, they were, when they were terrified, they said, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, do not be afraid. Right there, Jesus says, do not be afraid. Now, if you see Jesus talk about it, he's like, oh, no, what am I going to do? Jesus always has the answer. If you go to Jesus, he's got the answer. There's no reason to be afraid. He's got your answer. He's got what you need every single time, but you have to ask. I tell the youth all the time, if you don't ask Jesus, if you're struggling with something with your test or whatever, even that school, I mean, we got LCU here. If you go to school here, um, and then you can ask God to bring things back to your memory. So I remember one time I was back there, and I was in fear. I was in, I was, you know, I was breaking down. I was like, oh, man, I got this test. And I did my part, and I studied, but I looked at it. I just went blank. I was like, I sat there. And everybody else got up, Chris and Chris, Dustin, everybody else got up, Brandon, Papa. And I'm sitting there and I'm turning red. I know I'm, I had to be turning red and I started panicking. My heart's beating fast. I just calmed down and I stopped. And I just sat there and prayed in tongues. Mr. Bill's probably ready to go home. And I sat there and prayed in tongues. And I mean, I didn't want to take a minute hundred of them, but I made close to it. And I prayed. But I calmed. when I got calmed down, when you're in fear, you always make bad decisions. You make something quick, you always mess up. Almost every time I'm in that fear, I've always messed up. But I was, I prayed and got calmed down. God helped me through it, brought everything back in our remembrance, and I passed the test. But, do not be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Jesus is always around. If you're, if you're a saved Christian, he's right with you all the time. Because he's, a, he's a still quiet, he's quiet, he's wanting you to ask him to help you all, all the time. And then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. Walking on the water, yes come. Jesus said, so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. He didn't want to say that Peter sank and all this kind of stuff. I ain't never walked on the water, so I'm going to discredit Peter. Peter did a good job. He, he did more than I did. He walked on the water. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why do you doubt me? I even often ask myself that when I read that scripture. But how many times in life I've been so close to my answer and I was looking over at something that didn't even matter or looking over that way and something that didn't matter instead of keeping my eyes straight towards Jesus. Now, I doubt it, but I mean, he does. He had every single time he's reached up. I reached up and asked for him to help me when I realized what I had done, take my eyes off of him. And I reached up. He was always there and he, he brought me back where I was supposed to be. But you can see the storm didn't affect him when his eyes were on Jesus. The storm never affected him when his eyes were on Jesus. The waves were still getting it. It was white cap, and I'm sure the boat was rocking up and down when he jumped out. I mean, it's a storm out in the ocean or wherever. But I mean, he was not focused on the storm. But when he started looking over, left and right, all around him, he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. And that's what's happening today. When you start looking at all this crazy stuff happening in the world, you begin to sink, you begin to fail. Your situation and circumstances can't put you in fear. And really, the devil can't. I've learned that myself. The devil even can't put you in fear. He can bring fear. He can bring it at you. He can bring, I, Mr. Bill, he taught a class not too long ago when I was, when I was in school a little bit ago. But anyways, he was teaching us a class and he would talk about how he had this sickness he was dealing with. And he never ever, even though he was dealing with it and all that stuff, he told us he never gave up. He kept trusting God and God brought him through it. But what if he didn't trust God? I mean, thank God he's still here. He's here right now. But I mean, he trusted God kept his eyes on Jesus, and every single time Jesus would bring you out. All you gotta do is keep your eyes on him. He'll take care of you. If you can be best, like I said, only you can allow fear to overwhelm you. Not even the devil, the devil can't control that. I mean, he, he can bring it, but it's up to you to either reject it or accept it. Amen. The reason we get in fear is just like Peter. When we take our eyes off of Christ, we look at the mountains in life. When Jesus says in Matthew, this we'll just read this real quick, Matthew 17, 20. You do not have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. Everything Jesus says is truth. If you have, if you had faith, even as a small mustard seed, you can say this, under this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Nothing's impossible with God. So why worry about tomorrow? I mean, tomorrow's not here yet. We've got things we've got to worry about today. I'm ministering right now. I'm going to focus on that. Tomorrow has its own things. We're getting ready to go to the youth trip and all that stuff. Y'all will be praying the morning before we go, but that's not here yet. Don't worry about to not worry. But focus on the day. Focus on what's here now. 
That's what we're supposed to do, and that's what Jesus says to us. Amen. If you worry, you won't step out in faith and trust God. I mean, I've learned that the hard way. Let's be honest with you. If you worry, I've, I've worried about things. I'll never forget when, I started, when we first got married, I was worried about how I'm going to pay these bills, how I'm going to do this. God, you know, that bill's coming and all this kind of stuff. God knew the whole time. God's not done. He knows what's coming. He can prepare you for it, but you have to trust Him. I kept tithing and giving. God provided like He always did, but I had to trust Him. And I had to do my part. If you don't do your part, you will like do it without. If you doubt, you do it without. But it also has action. Faith is action. Philippians 4, verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for all He has done for you. I mean, I can thank God right here, right now, for being alive. For being here today. I can thank God I'm on my own two feet. Thank God for everything I got. Thank God for my wife, my children. We believe in God for children. Thank God for my house and stuff's paid for. It's done in Jesus' name. But you have to keep saying it. Speak stuff into existence. It's done. It's here now. But just for example, this past Saturday, God, this, it's funny because this is God providing for me and also being able to witness this guy. But... This past Saturday, I was in a church van, and this guy pulled up um, from Texas. He, he just moved out down here to Fork. His wife's from New York and all this kind of stuff. He told me this story. And he goes on to tell me he bought a ranch not far from the house. And he definitely starts telling me he bought a ranch. He opened a bush hog. He said, these people said, you do a good job. We want you to come bush hog in the yard for me if you come check it out. I said, yeah, I'll come look at it. He goes on and on, of course. He tells me he's a Christian. He's a nice guy. There's nothing wrong with him. He's, he's a great guy. But then he starts talking doubt. About everything that's going on in this world. And then he goes on to tell me, World War Three, you know, World War Three's about to break out, and I'm like, no, I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. He starts, he starts saying, man, I'm scared for the generations to come, and all this kind of stuff. And I start, and, I, and it grows up inside of me. And I said, you know, I sure am glad. I know the end of the story. I told him, I just told him that because I mean, he said he's a Christian, so if he read his Bible, he's been to church, hopefully, or some somebody say it. I said, you know, I, well, I know that I'm glad I have a book. And I know the end of the story. We win. We already have one. Well, I'm claiming my victory. I'm a Christian. I'm claiming my victory now. It don't matter what the devil says. It don't matter what the president says. And at the end of the day, the president's only there for four years before they get impeached or whatever happens. I don't know. It ain't up me. I mean, I, I do my part. I vote. Like I said, I did my part. But I ain't. I'm more. I mean, I'm one person. And thank God we all get there. We vote like we're supposed to and do what God said. But at the end of the day, if the country's going down, why can't I still be going up? I mean, I, it's, up, it's up to me. I mean, if I take my eyes and start saying, oh, man, I just filled my truck with $150 for all this stuff. Oh, man, I can't buy this. I can't do that. I can't do that. If I start saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, then I won't, I won't, I won't, and I never will. But I was, I, was, I mean, every single day I get up, I focus on what I have to do that day. I thank God for everything. I don't focus on all this stuff going on. I mean, I try to help people and all that. Today, this woman cut me off, and I was like, thank God. Bless her, bless her, God. Bless her. I was like, I was just, I was like, thank God. It looked at me like I'm crazy, and I was like, Lord, please help her. Just like I mean, everybody, I mean, people were selfish and all that stuff. And I had a guy this week. I mean, God, I was, I was witnessing to him and all this kind of stuff. And he starts talking about hard things all the time. I just, we were, we were talking. And he goes on on this. He was, I guess, he was mad for something that happened to him or whatever. And he goes on and on and on the whole time. We're tearing this floor up, trying to move these lockers and all this kind of stuff at the paper mill. And he starts complaining about everything going on. I said, man, I said, you can tell you what. He said, what? He said, what do I do? I said, you can tell you what your problem is. I said, your mouth. I said, everything you talk about is doubt. And I was being mean. I really want to be mean. I said, everything you say is doubt. And I said, you keep saying doubt. He, he knows I'm a Christian. He says he's a Christian. No, they, he, gets, he, was, he was saying a couple other things too. But I mean, I was just, I was nice as I could to. And I finally had enough. I said, man, he said, you keep talking this whole time. I said, you ain't never going to get no better. I said, it's just going to keep getting worse. He said, he's Thing. And I said, I don't think I know it because I've done it. I said, I've done it. I've witnessed to him. Then, I mean, these guys, I mean, I guess they look up to me. They call me the whole too, like I said earlier. But they, they, we talk and stuff all the time. And they're good. I mean, they're not. I mean, some of them, some of them say they're Christians, some of them are not. I witness to them. I treat them all the same. Like, I mean, try to be nice to every single one. But it's, at the end of the day, I can do my part and witness it to them. But they have a choice. Once I put it in their lap, that's on them. They ain't my job from there. I still help them, but they call me, I, I'm there for them. But I mean, God, I mean, hopefully that seed was planted, and I did the part, planted the seed when I need it. They can hopefully pick it up and trust God, and hopefully I'll see them in heaven one day. I pray that's my goal, to see them guys in heaven, because I want everybody I can take. That's what our job is as a Christian, is to take as many people as we can when the rapture comes back. But he starts talking about World War III and all this stuff going on, and I was like, man, you know, this, 
I was really, it really bothered me because I was sitting there thinking, I was like, this guy's a Christian. He says he's a Christian. I could tell he's a Christian too, but when he started talking at first, I knew he was a Christian because he, I mean, just, I could pick up on that when he starts talking negative. I was like, you know, people tell him themselves when they start talking about things, or what they're feeding them. He might be a Christian. You can be a Christian and still, I mean, still do sinful things and not, you don't want to. That guy had just been, he got used to it. He was a Christian, but he got used to just feeding on the negative all the time. What you put in is what's going to come out. He's sort of focusing on the evil in this world. I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know they were talking about World War III. I mean, it don't bother me. I mean, I, I thank God. I mean, whatever. I mean, God will protect us. But I, I'm, not, I'm not feeding on the world evil report. Faith and fear are total opposite. If you are in fear, you say, what if this or this could happen? Well, you just don't know. I hear people, older people talk about, man, you guys are going to have a car when you get up. No way, we're going to have a heart. I thank God, yeah, we might have to we might have to go through a few things. I mean, we're in this world today. We might have to go through a few things, but it just lets me know we've got a lot of people saved. God's coming back. I mean, the world's going to wax worse and worse. But I believe there's going to be a great Bible breakout across the land, everywhere, all over the country, all over the world, right before Jesus comes back so we can take as many people as we can with us. But if you come to church all the time, dead, broke down, you don't bring your supply every single time you come. If you're not praying in the Holy Spirit, Praying in tongues all the time. I mean, I spend time praying in the Spirit every single day. When things start happening to me, when I start facing fear sometimes, things start happening, I start praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit. You build your spirit, man, up. You pray in the Spirit, that's your heavenly language to God. And the good thing about it is the devil has no clue what you're saying, so he can't combat you with that. He can't say, well, you're praying for this or you're praying for that. But you don't know because you can't speak that language. You ask somebody to speak in Spanish. I don't know that. All I know is country boys talk, I guess we'd say. But... But he is. But in faith, you say, "I believe it." The Bible says it, and the, and that settles it. My God can and will already and will amazing grace, amazing grace, and will and already has brought me through it. My, by faith, if you if you're walking by faith, you say, "I believe it." The Bible says it, and that settles it. My God and will and already has brought me through it. What you're facing today, if you're trusting God, he's, you might be in it. You might be facing it right now, but he already brought you through it. Just thank God it's done. Thank God every time I every time I ride by my house, thank God it's paid for it. I might be taking that mortgage payment, but I, I pay extra on it and do all that stuff. Thank God my house is paid for it. Thank God my children are there. Thank God everything we have is taken care of. i got a good home. We do have a good home. Thank God. It's peaceful when I go home. I like going home. I tell more all the time. I like to come home because it's peaceful. I don't, I don't, I don't come home and put my boxing gloves on and go inside to see more. I never do that. I come home and I always grab her mother. Because I like coming home. I mean, but I go to work, do what she's supposed to do, and all that good stuff. But God even promises to take care of us. I mean, he, he prom there's several promises. People miss one if they read the Bible because people say, he said this in the Bible and all this kind of stuff. Everything we face, this homosexual stuff that's going on, that's in the Bible. I mean, this, all this stuff you see today, everything in life, doesn't surprise God what we face. He knew it before it was coming. But Hebrews 13, chapter 13, verse 5. Don't love money. Be steadfast with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. He said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. God says, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. I mean, I was, I was just in Dr. Hagen a couple days ago, and he, he kind of took me by surprise. Jesus says this a lot. He says, I will. He says, I will. And you can't make a stronger statement. Dr. Hagen said this. He said, you can't make a stronger saying and say, I will do something. That's Jesus, God, giving his word to you. I will do it. I will do it. I, I, I mean, at least when Jesus says, I will do it, he is his word, and he's never failed us. You just have to trust him. Jeremiah 17, chapter 17, verse 7. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. If you're not trusting the Lord, you do not have hope, you do not have confidence. I got it right here. If you trust in the Lord, you are blessed. Warning is not blessing, faith is not hope, and no, fear is not hope, and doubt is not faith. Fear is not hope. I mean, I've, like I said, I'll give it in a minute. There was a story I wanted to tell, but I mean, God keeps bringing it back to me now. And I'll say in just a second. You have to speak to fear or it will, or it will not leave. Make the devil go in Jesus' name, and he has no choice but to go. I never forget it. It was the greatest thing. Me and Morgan, there, little Caden. Caden comes to you. He's used to me. So this is Tyler Holland and all the guys. Anyways, I gave this testimony at youth one time. I never, me and Morgan, 
I got we just got married. We were in this house, and I don't know what in the world happened in this house. There was some crazy stuff happening up there, apparently, because we don't have anything like this ever happened in our house. But I had to take authority over the devil. I remember I was taking a shower one day, and I happened to have a glass door. And I looked up the shower. More going to my nose, just me. I looked up the shower, and I saw this black figure there, which is of the devil. I mean, that's evil spirit. People say the devil ain't real. He is real. And I had never had anything like that happen before, because I mean, I live up and live with mom and dad. Mom and dad, my dad, dad's an authority of the house. It never happened there. And I mean, now I'm the authority there. The devil wants to see what he can do. He wants to try you. He's going to try you and test you and push you as far as you let him. And I stood there and I looked at her and I was like, boy, I know that ain't something standing right there. I was like, what is that? I was like, man, I was just, I turned around. I was like, boy, let's get out of here. I was like, I, was like, I, need, to go, I need to go cut the church. So I, I looked I looked back and it's gone. So I get out, get ready, all this good stuff, load my stuff up. And go on more everything up, and I feel feel kind of weird. I felt weird when I woke up, man, about a feeling, but I just felt kind of. I never felt that way before. I used to know I never feel scared. I mean, I never have felt scared. Even I see people in my life want to steal my stuff. I'm like, come on, we'll roll for this roll. I mean, but at the same time, I was just like, you know, I never. I, I was terrified. I, I was legit terrified. I was scared to death, and I never have been that scared in my life, and never have been since then or before then. But I remember coming out here. I started cutting the grass, and I kept seeing this thing. I was like, man, what's going on? I was like, I mean, I'm. I ain't doing anything wrong. You don't have to do anything wrong for the devil to come attack you. The devil can just come to see what he can do. And that's what he does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I got up, so it was the winter time. The only thing I had to do was cut here. So I was like, man, I don't want to go home. So I put my burger pee, and I went home. And I went home, and I, I sat in the chair. And I, I, when I was out here cutting, I mean, I, when I saw it, I just kind of turned my head, and I sort of, I just, I just kind of calmed down. I went back home, got, did, did my stuff or whatever, and everything. And I was sitting there. I never felt anything like that in my entire life. It was pure fear. I never, I mean, I could, it was like a presence coming up in the room. And I was, and I had been scared. There were several things that happened before then, but this was like the end of it all. And I, and I remember, I was like, man, I have been told. I was like, you know what God does. And all, all of a sudden, I was just sitting there, and I started praying the Holy Spirit, and I could feel God come all over me. I could feel that evil come out of the hole, but I could feel God come all over me. And there ain't no doubt in my mind it was an evil, evil spirit. I mean, I never, it was that they wanted to, they were crazy, and you were hallucinating. I was wide awake, just like I am now, talking to you. And the devil was standing right there, and this, and it, really spoke to me how strong God really is and how little the devil really is. And he's, he's nothing. And I got, I got, I was, I was trying to get in there and I got a, you know, I reverence towards God, but I was mad. I got mad because I was like, I realized what had been happening and I could, I was supposed to take authority over it. And I got mad and I jumped out of that chair and I looked at that thing, whatever it was, I don't know, and it looked like it had no eyes. But anyways, it was like right here in front of my face. And I said, I command you in the name of Jesus. I didn't say it like that. I was pretty loud. I was mad. I have got mad. I command you in the name of Jesus. When I said Jesus, I've never seen nothing like that. It was like, it just went away. It was calm. It was like I could feel a little wind. I just felt like wind just came in there. It was just calm. And I was like, man, I was like, holy cow, you know, God will take care of me. And he, he did. There was nobody there. I had just moved out. Mom and dad weren't there. The big boy now is down to the big boy bed. And the devil left. He left. But I had to do my part. I mean, I, I don't want to know what would happen if I just sat there and just like, oh, God, where's that? You know, I'm like, I, mean, I don't want to know what would happen. But thank God. And that, that was, I mean, God really showed up. And he hadn't showed up ever since then. But I mean, that was the day I was like, I've seen things in my own eyes happen, but I was like, man, I've, that was amazing how strong God is. I mean, the, the devil has to flee. He, Jesus walks in that. When he walked into hell, could you imagine? They were all bowing down. They're scared. I mean, he's like the undertaker coming in there. He's like, I'm a big guy. I'm a big show. That's what Jesus was. I mean, to them, they had to, they had to sit down. I mean, it was, Jesus is all all powerful. I mean, I was, there was a, something I think it was John from Christmas. He sent it to me. We were in the gym. That's my king, the king of the king, king of kings, the king of the Jews. He's the king of all kings. That's my king, Jesus. But Mark 11, might be not Mark, Mark 5, verses 22 through 24. The leader of the local synagogue was named, whose name was Jairus, Jairus, Arad. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him, and all the people followed, crowding around him. Mark 5, verse 34. 34 through 43, then we'll take the day. He did a few things there in between them. But anyways, and he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. While he was speaking, to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogues. They told him, your daughter is dead. 
So I mean, right there, if they came and told Jesus, there ain't no point you coming. If your daughter's dead, his daughter's dead. You might want to go and do something else, help somebody else, because there's nothing you can do. Just because somebody dies, Jesus, I mean, he, he raised people from the dead. I'll never forget, there's, I heard something not too long ago, and it's been a while ago, actually. It's been a while ago. When they said, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, if he would have said, dead rise, everything dead would have had to rise under his power. If he didn't just call Lazarus by his name, Every dead person would have to rise up. That's just how much power he has. Being specific, everybody will rise up. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said, Jairus, do, don't be afraid. Every time Jesus talks, do not be afraid. Just have faith. Don't be afraid. Just have faith. Every time he talks, just have faith. Just have a little bit of faith. If you have a little bit of faith, then you'll be able to move mountains. Like he said, just a mustard seed faith will move mountains. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. I mean, their little daughter just died. I mean, you don't imagine. I mean, they wouldn't be too happy about that, I imagine. He went inside and asked, why all this, commo why all this commotion? Like, are there ain't nothing wrong. He's just, he's just sleeping, like he says. The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. The crowd laughed at him. Just because somebody laughs at you and makes fun of you. They usually don't laugh when a dead person rises up. They're like, wow, God's real. And it takes miracles, and I believe that's going to happen more and more and more as the times get closer. The crowd laughed at him, and but he made them all leave. He just made them leave. He just said, get out. If you ain't got no faith, leave. And he, he took the girl's father and mother <laughs> and his three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. She's laying there dead. Holding her hand, he said to her, Talitha Kahu, I believe, man, I probably said that right. Which means, little girl, get up. He spoke to her, little girl, get up. He didn't say, little girl, can you please get up? He just spoke and demanded it, and it happened. And the little girl, who was 12 years old, immediately stood up and walked around. She immediately stood up and walked around. Now that's faith. But you just think, go in there saying, man, I really hope this works. He knew, he said, she's just asleep. I can write what? It ain't no big deal. I mean, sorry, little girl dead was a big deal to everybody. They were all weeping and crying, all this kind of stuff. Jesus went in there calm and said, little girl, get up. He took authority over his problem, just like I took authority over the devil that day. If you don't take authority over the situation you're facing, whether it's with family, whatever, if you don't take authority over it, the devil will just stomp you down and laugh the whole entire time. Just like he's laughing at all these people that's worried about everything. He's like, ha, 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 I got you. When he's supposed to be saying, you're supposed to be laughing at him. He's supposed to be laughing at you. They got a song that says, ha, 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 laugh the devil like this. They used to play that camp all the time. It was pretty cool. But they were overwhelmed and totally amazed. Jesus gave them strict orders not to let anyone who had who had happened and then he told them to give her something to eat. He told them to feed a little girl like I mean nothing happened. He said, just give her something to eat. She's broke away, she's probably hungry. Just feed her. I want something to eat too, but I'm not sleeping. But Mark chapter 5, verse 34 through 43 in NLT. And this is one of Smith Woodward, this is one Smith Woodworth lived by. And I, I thought this was awesome. They had just gave the report that J.R.'s Aris's daughter was dead and they needed to leave Jesus alone. He responded in verse 36 by saying, Fear not. Anytime any, anything happens, fear not. Fear puts you in a state of doubt. Anytime you start fearing, you're like, man, this is gonna be bad. Every time you start to fear, you, you're not calm. You're worried, you're anxious, everything you start. You know, when I'm in fear, I, that time I was in fear, I, mean, I literally felt hot, I and mean, I was just I was scared. I mean, there's no other word for it. Terrified. But I mean, Jesus is never fear, he's got faith. If you only believe. But fear not, only believe. He was showing them that the cure for fear is faith. If you fear, if you have fear, build your faith. How do you build your faith? Study the word of God day and night. Trust on God. Feel His Word. Listen to His tapes. Listen to the CDs, all the USBs now. They download this stuff. Just like today, I wanted to learn some more things about God and all this stuff. Dr. Egan and all them. We ordered uh, the 50th anniversary camp meeting and it comes with all the camp meetings, a USB thing. I mean, I want to learn from people that have already been before you. That's what they were here for. No matter what Wigglesworth would face, his response would be, fear not, only believe. Fear not. I mean, I even think the day that the guys I worked with, he was talking about something. He was just talking about a few crazy things. I, 
he wouldn't even mention anything about God. And if they start focusing on stuff, it really, it'll affect you big time. It'll affect your whole entire life. If you start focusing on negative, you always be negative. I know people, I mean, it's a great guy and everything, but he was focusing on, you know, he started talking about all this stuff the other day. We were riding a truck. He said, man, they got testing all this stuff at NASA, this nuclear thing about some kind of God stuff. And I mean, it's not God, it's the devil. They were talking about the world ending and everything like that. And the world is going to end. I mean, God's going to come back and take every part of us home and all that. If you're a Christian, make sure you knew if you're a Christian, you'll be all right. But if you ain't, you're in some big trouble. And I make sure they know that because I don't want to be like, I don't want to be held accountable because, I mean, we would have accountable. Anybody we come in contact with and don't want us witness to them, I mean, I feel like we would have, I don't think, feel like I know we would be held accountable for it. Man, I was telling them, just like I was telling the youth this past week, fear, I, I was talking to them about fear, even witnessing. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, that's what we've been teaching them. His Holy Spirit, Dr. Reagan's book, with the devil. We've been teaching them that. I mean, when we go on this trip this week, we're going to, I mean, they're, they're going to feel the Holy Spirit. That's what we're going for in the last lesson, I believe, Saturday night. That's what I had planned. I've been studying it even harder. If they ain't feel the Holy Ghost, I know they're all saved, but we're all going to be, I mean, we got good godly people going to be there, me, Morgan, Chris, all the, all the workers that are going, Dustin, Lauren, all of them, Logan, they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, they're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost when they come back off the ship that I, I made it in my heart. The ones that come, I mean, that are faithful. They want to know God. When we go to camp this year. They're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't, we don't have to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. They can be filled with the Holy Ghost now. And make sure they know that. We can be filled with the Holy Ghost now. Just to accept what God's given you. It's a gift. Take it. I mean, it's just like just like no fear. I mean, when you're not worried about anything, life's pretty good. If you're not worried about how am I going to make it, it's just like today. You know, I went out about, I take that out and did all this stuff, make sure we're going on a trip tomorrow, all that good stuff. I don't worry about my mortgage payment. We don't worry about the light bill. We don't worry about the car payment. We don't worry about this. We don't worry about that. Yeah, we go to work. But I'm a tither and a giver. Things that down. The bank account might look different one day than the next. Things are up and down. But if you focus on that, you'll be up and down. You'll be happy one day. You see people like that all the time. And they name stuff all the time, bipolar and all this kind of stuff. I mean, people focus on things that's no, I mean, it's just fear. If you start focusing on stuff, you like I said, doubt you do without. If you believe, you'll always receive. I mean, I don't just keep going on and on, but I mean, that's, that was a fearless. We're, Christians are supposed to be fearless. This world today needs somebody to know what they're talking about. We go out there and went to some people. They're looking for the answer. The drunk under the bridge, we're looking, he's looking for the answer. When you come to church, you're supposed to come to church, build up. I mean, I know I used to come to church, but oh man, I had a bad day, all this kind of stuff. It was hot today, blah, blah, blah. It don't really matter. I came to church to be with white believers, to focus on God, to hear what God's man of, of the hour was saying. I mean, you come to church, you're supposed to be built up. You're supposed to bring your supply when you come. I, the way I look at it, even with those guys and stuff, if I don't stay built up in faith, when they come and ask me questions, if I don't know what the Bible says, they start asking me questions, what about this, what about that? And if they just say, I don't know, they're going to be like, well, I thought you were a Christian. I want to know what God says, so when they need help, I can help them. And we should all be that way. But, I mean, that's, that's what I have. But be a fearless Christian. That was the title. I mean, I have to be fearless. But... I want to thank the pastors and all that for allowing me to speak tonight. It's going to be play the piano. Um, you can stand to your feet. If you're in here tonight and you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord, your own Lord, personal Savior tonight, you can do that right now. Anybody in here, if you want to raise your hand, you can just come straight down. We'll be ready. We'll be glad to play, play with you. So everybody here is saved. You guys can look up at me. I um, appreciate you listening to me. I believe the pastors are home now. And thank God they had a great time at Winter Bible Seminar. Dismissed. Good. How you doing, guys? Good, good.